This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 10. Brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of our continuing coverage of important news events. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. The Apollo 10 successfully orbiting the moon has just come around to the near side of the moon, the side we can see from Earth on its third revolution. The ground stations have just acquired a transmission signal from the spacecraft again. We expect to be again hearing from the astronauts themselves very shortly. And then sometime in the next 15 minutes, they're going to turn on the cameras. And for the first time with those color cameras they have carried to the moon's environment for the first time, we will see the moon's surface from their 69 mile high altitude. And here, the astronauts own description of what they're seeing up there. So far in their two revolutions of the moon, since they went into the moon orbit at 4.45 this afternoon, uh, they have been uh, ecstatic about what they have seen. You have to see this planet to believe it, is one of their phrases. Fantastic, brownish gray. We've seen some good volcanoes. And uh, Tom Stafford said at one point, at the risk of sounding corny, the view is out of this world. The colors, they say, are more alive on the back side of the moon than on the fore side, shades of black, white, and some brown. They, uh, they have called it a really rugged planet, and Tom Stafford has said that uh, it's going to be a real trick to go down among those mountains tomorrow when they take the lunar module down within 10 miles of the moon's surface. They've also said that it's a beautiful view at night, that the craters glow as if radioactive, and they glow in a rather dim light. They've seen the solar corona, and they call it beautiful as well. But while we're waiting for this communication from the uh, spacecraft, we might take uh, a look at the moon track over which they'll be passing. We'll do that in just a moment. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. That uh, picture from the moon we expect uh, very shortly now, in just a moment that they punch it up from Apollo 10, we will have it on here, of course, and if we get some interesting transmissions by voice from the astronauts before then, we'll go to it as well. Let us take a quick look at that ground track uh, on the, loon, uh, the moon, or lunar track it should be called, perhaps. They came around the moon at just about this point there, when they first uh, were able to see the Earth. As they moved along up there for a way, they over to the right uh, could see the small crater of Jansky and then the crater of Nepper, and on up a little bit further over to the left, the crater of Langrenus, and to the right, one of the seas of the moon, Mare Crisium. A little bit further along, and they moved into the Mare Tranquillitatis area, the, uh, uh, the sea in which the landing sites are. You see the rills across the moon about which they have referred already. And here is landing site number two, where they expect to come. Uh, the first pictures from the moon from Apollo 10. Let's listen in for the transmission. We're not getting any voice transmission from them. We'd expect that shortly. These are live pictures from okay, the moon. Okay, and this is Houston, that's a real good picture, and uh, we see the crater you're talking about there. That's an awfully good TV picture. Okay, we are becoming close to the moon. Uh, the picture uh, on Nipper here, Tom can scan over to get it. Yeah, okay, boy. we have a fed to us from uh, Mission Control in Houston. Okay, we're going to be close to the moon now. Uh, we're going to be close to we should be coming right over the Smite C right at the present time. Roger, that's affirmative, and that was F1 you were showing us there just a minute ago, Daniel. Roger, okay, I've got this at full zoom. You like it at full zoom, or do you want it back down a little bit? Looks like we've got some pretty good resolution here. You got fantastic resolution, Tom. Uh, you might back off the zoom just a little bit to give us a little bigger picture, get a little better orient. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, 
Seems that they're remaining almost stationary over a single spot there. Joe, can you see we just passed over a reel down there? The, the reel should be in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. They're moving at 3,700 yeah, miles an hour. Down, and uh, the outside position on an ALC seems to give us better resolution down here than the inside. Uh, how's that compare with your monitor? Estimate this crater is about 40 miles in diameter. Again, for your edification, we are upside down going forward to keep the sun off the windows and also kind of conserve fuel. But uh, the rate you see there on the monitor, at least what I can see, is exactly our orbital right here. John is maintaining a 315 orb rate upside down. Okay, we copy that. Thank you. And Tom, could you see all the little. Depression here. It's more uh, around 
fish, more of a deep brown now. Roger, it's looking here uh, exactly as you're describing it, Tom. That's, that's tremendous. Take you on the right side. Gene will show you the crater length. Tom, you're reading our mind. We were just going to ask you to take a shot of that if you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving the camera over to another window of the spacecraft. Right, there, there you see the moon's horizon. Jim Lovell described the uh, terraces of this crater on Apollo 8. Okay, Tom, we're getting that picture very good, and that's a tremendous color you got. is over to the left of them uh, as they move forward in their orbital path along the moon's equator. Langrenus, the uh, whitish crater in the center of the screen, is about 90 miles in diameter. Okay, Ken, this is Houston. Whatever you did there, if you were, uh, if you were uh, playing around with your lighting, uh, that gave us a real good picture then. is almost uh, 100 miles from them. Yeah, 
off to the left of their path so you can get an idea how large it is. We're getting a real good picture of that central peak now. Okay, Jane, uh, I wonder if you could zoom in on that central peak uh, with that aperture shut down a little bit. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. The walls of Langrenus are about uh, two miles high. That central peak is about 7,000 feet above the floor of the crater. Over here, I'm losing out of my window. Roger that. And just for your information, uh, your onboard vector looks great. Uh, we're satisfied with it. That voice from uh, Mission Control, the capsule communicator, is Joe, Joe Engel. Okay, we're well, standing by. Mrs. Stafford, the wife of the commander of Apollo 10, is at Mission Control watching these pictures come in there. There is a tremendous picture. Well, you can see the horizon in the distance there. Okay. Well, that is rugged. That's just absolutely beautiful. Well, on the left, on John's side, you're looking at the uh, sea of crises. On the right, we've got the sea of fertility. And uh, we're coming very shortly up upon a polar ridge out our hatch window. We're starting to look straight down over the mine, but the arrow will show you the Toronto's twins, and such A and B, and say right down that's a one for us. Right, Tom, the resolution, the detail that we're getting is just unbelievable. This, this is just great. We ain't getting bad detail ourselves up here. Roger that. lost our picture there for a moment from uh, Mission Control in Houston. There it is, back again. We're coming right up on the uh, uh, Papa Kilo Hotel and Golf here, uh, leading into the landing site area. Roger, we're picking them up now. sea of, of fertility is off to their left as they follow this equatorial path around the moon. They're coming up over a range just before the sea tranquility appears over right under them and to their right. And uh, there on the southwestern corner of the sea of tranquility uh, is the landing site where... should very shortly be getting a picture of the landing site number two, which is the preferred landing site for the okay, flight of Apollo 11 in July. Thrown out on the rim. Uh, Sachi Kilo is another one uh, 
which appears to have uh, boulders, and you can contrast them very easily from the little uh, little pinpoint uh, craters around the edge. Uh, they just stand out differently, and they appear to be boulders that are out on the rim, out on the uh, edges of the rim. Okay. Right. Which, uh, which one are you looking out of now, Tim? Tom's got it out the hatch window. Okay. Just for your info, we're uh, we're seeing the RTV on the side of the window, and it's uh, pretty much in focus. This is the lunar surface. Okay. Okay. You see how flat those seas seem to be. We should have Kirkenberg coming up the other way. Since the spacecraft is upside down. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that might be Gutenberg right there. I'm looking, uh, showing you the central peak, uh, which is very clear on my monitor here. Roger, that's, that's where all the pencils are pointing down here, Gino. To the right side is to the south, since they are flying upside down and backwards. Okay, Joe Jackson, we're passing over the Apollo Ridge right now, looking down. It's almost 180 miles down to Gutenberg guys, from where they are. Really spectacular. That really brings it home. Okay, and it's, it's still kind of a... It's still half between gray and brown right now, Joe. Joe is Joe Engel, the capsule communicator. Jack, they refer to as Jack Schmidt, an astronaut geologist who... Uh, trains the other astronauts in these lunar features. Jack, you're looking at some of those uh, depressions that go right through uh, some of the craters now, and, and they're very flat, and uh, where the shadow, where they're shallow, uh, we can see right to the bottom of them. Good. differing theories as to what causes those craters on the moon. Some believe that they are impacts from meteorites. The moon has been bombarded by them through its long geological history. Others that uh, they may have been caused by the volcanic action. should be just about opposite uh, landing site one at this time. Yeah, <laughs> to the impact theory of the splash marks uh, around some of these craters. We've not seen any particularly noticeable ones in this transmission. They are to be seen others, other pictures. You ought to be looking uh, just about right in the area of B1 right now. Roger, we're picking it up, Jane. We've got it in the upper left-hand uh, portion of our screen now. And, uh, I don't know what... This okay, I don't know whether Tom can uh, scan on Censorina, but Censorina should be just to the right of that, in the hills. Roger, we copy. And you had a real interesting little dome with about five or six uh, small craters in it there that was an awful interesting look at. Yeah, around this area you can tell there's typically lots of volcanic activity and cones in there. And that's that's really from the oblique view. Sensorinus is a relatively new lunar crater and of great scientific interest. Here we come. Here's, here's the crater masculine. Roger, we copy. You can see the shadow in it. 
Oklahoma. We know something about Diamondbacks and Sidewinders. Oh, yeah, 10 inches of use in those reels, and uh, all these details are really coming out great. And that color doesn't hurt a thing. Site 2 is where Neil Armstrong and his crew of Apollo 11 expected to land in July. Okay, Tom, and could you go uh, to the inside on ALP and the 2.2 uh, on your camera now? They're coming into the dark point of the moon. It's still the part of the moon facing us, but as you know, we have just barely a quarter moon, and the, they're passing over that dark line between the bright side of the moon reflecting the sun's light and the dark side which the sun has not yet reached. Magnificent pictures from the moon. The first color pictures from the moon by the second spaceship full of voyagers to that distant planet. Magnificent pictures, including a sight just before they went into the lunar darkness there of the. Kenneth and Houston, uh, before you terminate the TV, oh. before you secure it, we'd like to have a uh, color chart shot so we can uh, calibrate things. Uh, the point where Apollo 11 is scheduled to land. Uh, in July, if all continues to go as well as it has with this flight. They're going to show now a color chart. The line there, cameras. They're going to get ready now for the next uh, major event of their epical voyage, and that's at 10.30 uh, tonight when Eugene Cernan, for the first time, leaves the command module and climbs into the lunar module to test out its systems for tomorrow's uh, great flight when they depart from the command module in the lunar module and 
swoop down within 10 miles of that landing site, too. You just had a very good look at through television from the moon. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. So we saw those magnificent color pictures from the moon and found that the moon apparently is not quite black and white after all, but is sort of a brownish gray and there is quite a bit of definition more to be seen in, in color pictures than there were in the black and white pictures we saw from Apollo 8 last December. We saw clearly what uh, the astronauts have been talking about since they arrived there at the moon at 4.30 roughly this afternoon and talking about how rugged that planet is. You have to see this planet to believe it, they have said, and now the millions and the billions of us around the world have had the privilege of sharing it with them. At the risk of sounding corny, Stafford said earlier, uh, this view is out of this world, and now we too can confirm that. We can also confirm uh, that what uh, Stafford had said earlier is certainly true, that it's going to be a real trick to go down among those mountains tomorrow. And that uh, is the trick that Tom Stafford and Eugene Cernan have to pull off for their own safety and for the future of manned space exploration of the moon and the flight of Apollo 11 scheduled for July. They are scheduled now, uh, Eugene Cernan, to climb down into the lunar module in another 25 minutes or so to spend two hours there checking out its systems. Tomorrow, uh, they, after eight hours sleep tonight, they, uh, Stafford and Cernan, go back into that uh, lunar module and then at 2.58 p.m. they undock. That's Eastern Daylight Time, uh, give or take a few minutes. They leave the command module. They uh, will give us some television uh, from the command module where John Young stays behind uh, to uh, show us that undocked LEM out there immediately after they have undocked. They begin their descent uh, into the, their uh, lunar orbit at 423, and they reach that 10-mile point at 535. They reach it again at 732 and redock at 1108 tomorrow night. It's going to be an exciting night, and of course, CBS News will be covering all of those details. This is Walter Cronkite at the CBS News Space Center, New York. This has been a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10, brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of our continuing coverage of important news events. This is CBS.